Hey guys, it's Joel from GunToter.org. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about battle belts and kind of like my history with them and some of the belts that I actually have now and, and how I have them set up and kind of why. So I've been wearing battle belts oof, probably since about 2010. Um, so I started out, uh, my uniform back then was a flight suit because flight suits were cool and that's what all the cool guys wore, so we had flight suits. Um, the problem with a flight suit is if you've ever worn one and then tried to put gear on over it, especially a belt, uh, there's nothing for that belt to hook up to. So my, my first battle belt that I ever had was actually, um, was just a riggers belt with um, a pad around it. And this was kind of back before we really had the nice rubberized padding. So it was just literal, you know, kind of like foam padding. Um, with a pad and then you know everything was hooked to the belt I actually had a Safari Land 6004 drop holster and that helped to keep it from riding up and then I also had um, a pair of you know ultra thin suspenders which kept it from falling down and I would wear those underneath my kit so that was my first battle belt and it actually worked pretty well um, honestly the the balance between the two um, I worked worked really well um, didn't have a ton of weight on my belt back then uh, really it was just uh, pistol mags a uh, holster and then a dump pouch and my um, my life preservers my individual life preservers uh, which back then I believe was the peckies I think it was the peckies back then um, so after that uh, we went from the flight suits to the cry precision um, and I have worn cry precision for a while, but back then <clears throat> they actually had um, padding in the waist of the pants, which was really awesome. So I went from having a you know fully set up battle belt that I could just put on to actually you know, threading everything onto my riggers belt every time I geared up. Um, and that really wasn't a big deal back then because most of the work we did, you know, we had some advance notice. It wasn't like I was, you know, like a lot of law enforcement now where, you know, you're working leads and, you know, you need to throw your gear on and head out the door. Most of our stuff was very planned. So, you know, having to thread everything was not really that big of a deal. Uh, from there, uh, after I left that unit and I kind of got into teaching a little bit, I actually set up my own, you know, teaching belt and I, tend to teach basically in you know a pair of either uh, coal pants or maybe some 511s and a t-shirt and the t-shirt's usually untucked um, so I actually switched out I still have the belt that I that I teach with um, so this is actually a high-speed gear um, with the sure grip um, pad and I really really like this as you can see this is a teaching belt not an operational belt because i don't have a d-ring to clip into uh helicopters like i i did back when i was actually you know semi-cool um but i really like this because i can throw this over top of you know a pair of jeans and a t-shirt or whatever i have and it does a great job of staying in place especially with you know the leg shroud kind of anchoring it um haven't really had an issue with it falling down I uh, haven't really had an issue with it, you know, sliding up, you know, it, it really does a good job of anchoring. Um, on this belt, as you can see, I've got uh, two pistol mag pouches, rifle mag pouch, all Kiwis, because I love Kiwis in case you haven't figured that out yet. Um, flashlight, I have my med pouch, which actually, um, this is Live the Creed, they don't make this anymore, this was their... Um, I think they used to call it the operator. I honestly can't remember, but they don't make this anymore. Um, I've actually got two people's worth of gear stuffed in here. Um, I know, yes, your IFAC is for you. It's not for somebody else. But when I was teaching, it was really common for uh, students not to have their own IFACs. So I carried basically a second IFAC for them. Um, I love these, the 11 tent tourniquet holsters, huge fan. And then big fan of safari lane gear um, this is their uh, drop flex adapter on a single leg um, shroud uh, with their QLS um, 
you'll see the QLS again, um, but that's kind of how I have this set up. Um, I like this particular setup <clears throat> since I am using Kiwis and just about everything on here can thread onto a belt. Uh, the Kiwis, I'm using the uh, STAC belt loops, you know, so that's, that's how those are attached and everything else has basically a belt loop. Um, and then you can use these little, you know, in between bands to kind of keep things in place so it's not sliding around. And like I said, I, I really haven't had any issues with this, with any of this stuff moving. Um, so the, the premise here, you know, behind this was basically, um, this was teaching rifle and pistol skills. So, you know, I've got my mag holders for teaching all my different reloads, um, kept a flashlight handy for helping to, you know, check down range and clear guns, the med pouch I already explained. And then actually one of the reasons I started, you know, running the QLS was because, you know, depending on who I was teaching, I had to use different guns. You know, one day I might have to use a Glock. If I was teaching the Navy, I might have to use an M9. Uh, so I had a holster for each and I could just switch it out without having to switch the whole uh, rig. Um, so that's actually why I started using it. But once I started using it, I liked it so much, it kind of spread to all my other belts. Uh, you know, I have, I've gone back and forth with having a knife on this. Um, you know, I've taken some classes where I've needed, I've specifically needed a knife and you know I'll, I'll add a knife to it for that but honestly I don't normally keep a knife on this belt I normally have a folding knife of some sort I don't normally keep a fixed blade um, I do normally have a dump pouch here I pulled it off I had to loan it to my son so he could play uh, airsoft with it um, I had the Maxpedition on there but I'm probably going to replace it with the ATS um, gear because I like theirs better so and you'll see theirs again here in a second so <clears throat> another, the next belt, um, I actually went with, um, you know, what they call the operator belt. So it's the Molly based belt. Um, it's, it's, you know, kind of different setting it up, um, mollying directly onto the belt. But what I will say is, you know, going from my old padded belt, which was a Molly belt, um, to this, as a molly belt um, this is so much cleaner and thinner it's it's nice um, this is actually a lead devil USA uh, this is a work belt you know it's designed to be my ERT belt um, I am still playing around with this which is why it has the brown one not a black one it's coming um, but very similar setup I have my Kiwis this is the ATS dump pouch um, Live the Creed, which I already did a video on, 1110. And then this is a, there's a slight variation here. Um, as you can see, it's still got the drop flex adapter, but this is a, a shroud that allows you to run the strap a little bit higher. Um, you know, for a while there, all the cool guys were running uh, Safari Lands UBL, the universal belt loop. Um, and then they were taking and running the strap between um, the UBL and the actual holster and you know that was helping to provide a little bit of retention keeping it from flapping um, the problem that I had with and this is just me but the problem that I had with the UBL is the way the UBL is shaped um, when you add a strap to it on me it really digs into the side of my legs I'm not a big fan of UBL with a strap um, I do like the UBL um, without a strap uh, so my actual duty rig which I do not have on me because I mean that would just be a monstrosity to discuss but my actual duty rig has a UBL a mid-ride um, but the way this is set up here um, with the drop flex adapter it actually comes out to about a low ride UBL um, you can take this up one more set and it'll take it to about a mid the mid ride UBL but you have that option um, but the drop flex you know gives it that little bit of flexibility uh, to where it's not digging into my leg. Um, it's a little easier to sit down in. One thing I did find, uh, one of the reasons I went to the mid ride, I, cause I was, I was running the low ride on my duty rig for a long time. Cause I, it's great when I'm standing up. The problem is when I sit down in a vehicle, um, which, you know, in law enforcement, you tend to spend a lot of time in vehicles. Um, the low ride would, would basically get hung up on the seat 
and caused a lot of problems. It was really uncomfortable. Uh, the mid ride has less of an issue with that, so that's one of the reasons I went back to the mid ride on my duty gear. And honestly, the the height difference um, is really not that distinguishable, at least to me. Um, it doesn't really affect my draw stroke that much. Doesn't improve it. Doesn't hinder it. So you know, the mid ride is probably where I'm going to stay on my duty gear. Um, but as far as you know, kind of on the more tactical tactical side. Um, you know, I do like the drop flex adapter. Um, you know, when you're getting into vehicles, it flexes, you know, just enough. When you're moving, you know, flexes with you. But because it is, it is rigid enough to keep the gun where it needs to be, while flexible enough to not stab you, you know, in the leg with your, with your gun mount. So that's nice. Um, one thing I will say is if you are planning on using the QLS, but you plan on using the QLS for um, any sort of, work where you're going to be around people where you might have to go hands-on with people you might have people grabbing at your gun and so on there are actually two types of qls plates um, the type that i use for duty i believe is the qls 22 l um, but basically what it has is it has two extra bumps here and while that doesn't sound like much when the forks come in those two extra bumps make it just that much harder to push those forks in and pop them out. So it's basically just an extra layer of safety on your QLS. Um, for the same reason, for that same reason, you know, this is my duty holster. It's a SLS ALS, um, as opposed to like some of my training holsters, which are just ALS. Um, I like the ALS because once I insert the gun, it's locked in. So if for some reason I don't get the bail, closed it's still locked in but it gives me that second level of retention so that if i'm fighting somebody it's that much more time before they can get the gun out and it's important to remember you know when you're talking about retention levels on guns retention level or on holsters retention levels are not perfect um, basically all a retention level is doing is buying you time because eventually if you just you know let a guy play with your holster he's going to eventually get the gun out he's going to figure it out um, some of these guys have been in more than one fight. Some of them know exactly how to get your gun out. So retention levels are really just um, buying you time, uh, which is you know same reason I want these. Um, I've heard anecdotal stories. I haven't experienced it, but I've heard anecdotal stories of guys doing defensive tactics um, without these additional locking lugs and actually um, having their holster come loose in the QLS. So for duty gear, I am running with uh, the locking one. Now, the downside is, at least as far as I've seen, and I could be wrong because stuff changes all the time, I have not seen the locking QLS in any color besides black. Um, so, you know, if you're really into color coordination and everything you have is tan, that might be an issue. But, you know, if you really want to you know, not die, maybe just deal with the black. Um, so that is that is this rig, and um, because this is you know the operator style belt, um, it does have a loop inner belt, and then this is lined with hook, um, which in the case of lead double here is very aggressive hook. Um, it really does lock in good. Um, I really like it. Um, and I've not had any trouble with it shifting. Um, you know, running and doing you know, some light calisthenics and all that stuff, really haven't had an issue with it shifting. So uh, that's been really nice. Um, kind of the downside to using, you know, a hook and loop attachment like this versus, you know, the, uh, the sure grip like this one is that um, you have to have the underbelt on because this thing is not going to grip without the underbelt. I mean, it might grip to an extent depending on what you're wearing, but it's not going to function correctly without the underbelt on. So if you, uh, you know, were doing law enforcement and you were in a position where it might look a little shady if you're wearing, you know, an LE underbelt, because let's be honest, you know who wears those kinds of belts. Um, it's a dude who intends to put one of these over it, which means they're a cop or, you know, some sort of military or whatever. So, you know, it's just something to think about. If you are doing a lot of um, plain clothes type work where you don't want to wear an underbelt, then something like a sure grip may be a better option. Um, now, 
one thing that is nice. Um, I have not had a chance to play with it, but I've seen it on their website. Um, High Speed Gear makes an operator belt now um, that you can actually buy a sure grip inner pad for. So that gives you more options and options are good. So you can, you know, run it as, you know, a hook and loop with the inner belt, or you can put the sure grip in here and run it, you know, over um, just like you would a regular sure grip belt. So that's a, uh, that is a cool option there. Um, I may actually see if I can get one of those uh, sure grip liner belts and try it out with this lead devil and see how it works. Um, because I really like this lead devil, but I would like to have that option. Um, the one of the things I like on this lead devil is that it, you know, like a lot of regular um, belts, it has the the hook lockdown right here, the hook and loop lockdown, which is nice, keeps it nice and locked down. Um, for those of you who have never used an operator belt. Um, they are kind of a pain to set up. I'll be honest with you. This one is a very stiff belt, um, not stiff as in it's painful to wear, but it is very, um, very rigid. And Lead Devil um, has, they say it's custom webbing made. Uh, let's see if I can find, you know, it's custom basically half inch webbing right here. Um, so it's a single layer of webbing. Um, it does fit really thin and really tight. So, you know, getting your uh, malice clips, which is what I used behind there is, uh, is a bit of an experiment and frustration, but once you get it on there, um, you know, it holds it really, really well. And, and I've had no issues with stuff, you know, trying to escape. So that's that one. Now on to the next one. So the next one is my different work belt because I have a lot of work belts. Um, this is actually an Eagle operator belt. So a um, couple things are a little different on the Eagle. Um, one, it's actually loop lined instead of hook lined. And uh, if you go on their site, because I was wondering why they did that when everyone else does hook lining. Um, if you go on their website, they actually explain uh, and their theory is that when this outer part if you make this outer belt hook um, hook lined, you know when it's when it's flexing and whatever, um, you're basically kind of collapsing the hooks on themselves, so they're not getting a good grip. Whereas if you make it the inner belt, you know as it's as they're flexing outward, you're basically opening up the hooks to get a hold of the loop on the inside of the belt. So I thought that was a an interesting um, perspective on it. Uh, I really could not tell you. I really not noticed a difference between like this one and the lead devil, which is a hook lined. Um, really have not noticed a difference between the two as far as, you know, staying in place. Um, but you know, it is, that is their theory behind why they went with uh, loop line versus hook lined. Um, one slightly annoying thing on the Eagle is that um, the, the bitter end here of their belt, uh, there is the only thing that they give you to secure it is this elastic band, which is a little weird to me um, because I was having issues when it was in the elastic band. You know, if I grabbed this buckle wrong as I was trying to buckle it in, um, it would slide loose on me. So I'd have to buckle it on and then tighten it back down. So what I ended up doing was I ended up taking a piece of Velcro one wrap and basically captured it with the Velcro one wrap. Um, because I use Velcro one wrap for everything in case you haven't noticed from my other videos. Um, in keeping with the theme, Kiwi, Kiwi, ATS. This is my um, multi-tool from, uh, it's a Gerber. I don't know it was issued, I believe it's a Gerber. Um, now you notice that this belt is uh, very barren. And the reason for that, normally I would have, you know, my tourniquet pouch and my um, IFAC pouch on here. Well, policy for this job is that it has to be on my rig, on my chest rig. Um, so that is why it is not on here. Now, in my when I'm setting up my personal belts or my LE belt where I have a little bit more flexibility, I prefer to have my IFAC and my um, tourniquet on my belt. And the reason for that is 
I am more likely to have my belt on me at all times than I am to have my kit on me at all times. Um, so I prefer to have it on my belt. Uh, even in law enforcement, there are times when I'm not running a full kit because I'm not running like a plate carrier and all that other stuff. I might just be running soft armor, um, and but I'll still have my belt on because I will at least have my pistol on. You know, I may not be running a rifle in law enforcement at all times or even, you know, when teaching or even, I mean, I can be standing out defending a storefront and might not have my rifle on me. Um, you know, it just depends on what I'm doing. So, you know, I keep, I normally keep, as you can see from these other two belts, I normally keep stuff on the belt that I feel like I want to have on me at all times. And that includes my IFAC, my tourniquet, um, a pistol, uh, You'll also notice I don't have a pistol on here. Um, that is because in my job, at this job, I don't normally carry a pistol. I normally carry a rifle. Um, that is changing, however. Um, so I will be get I will be adding a uh, um, holster to this as well. And what I will probably end up doing is going with the same um, type of rig that I went with uh, on my LE belt, um, the same style, and uh, you know run that way. So, <clears throat> so that's three different belts, you know, three different theories behind it. Um, I've talked about, you know, the theories behind lines, you know, first line, second line, third line, so on and so forth. Um, you know, this is typically, you know, either your first line, you know, if you're military, this is probably your, what they would call your first line, um, you know, for a civilian or for LE, it might not be your first line because you might not always have a tactical belt on um, you know it's going to kind of vary but if you're getting to the point where you are wearing an overt belt like this um, as I said this is where I would put um, the stuff you want to have with you at all times you want to be able to defend yourself you want to be able to medically treat yourself and then from there you can add other little stuff you know um, you can add a flashlight um, you could actually add your radio pouch on here if you wanted to versus on your kit. Um, that's kind of up to you depending on, you know, if you see yourself needing a radio at all times. Because if you do, then I would recommend, you know, probably putting it on here. Um, you know, the multi-tool um, is kind of up to you. You know, once again, do you need it all the time? If so, um, or, you know, if you keep it in a, in a pocket and you, you've got cry and you're cool and you've got the little mini pockets up front, you know, keep it in that, you know, wherever you want to keep it. Um, but that's kind of the, you know, here's another thing is I normally only run one rifle mag pouch. I know a lot of guys that run at least two, they'll run like three pistol and two rifle. Um, that's a bit of personal preference. That's really kind of on you to figure out what, um, what your threat level is. You know, if you're only running your belt most of the time, but you still want to run a rifle, then yeah, I'd probably throw an extra rifle mag on here. But you know, if if it tends to coincide that when you're running a rifle, you're also wearing kit, um, and you can mount your magazines on your kit, then maybe I would only run you know one on my belt. But like I said, that's really that's kind of getting into into personal preference. Um, you know, and obviously how much space you have on your belt. Uh, I have a larger belt so I can fit more stuff on here. Uh, some people that are a little bit smaller might not be able to fit as much stuff on here. So that's that's another variable that you kind of have to take into account. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to take into account when you're, when you're setting up a belt. Um, I tried to throw a few of them out there. Um, I tried to do this as a really quick overview so you didn't have to listen to me for forever. So if you have uh, questions or if you have comments, uh, if you have favorite gear, I mean, I'm good with that. Uh, toss it in the comments, please. Um, so I hope this has been useful. Um, I really highly encourage you to ask questions, to share your experiences, you know, to, to put that stuff in the comments because, you know, we're, we're here to learn. I mean, that's why I'm here. That's why you're here, I hope, uh, and that, you know, we can learn from each other. So if you have uh, favorite gear that you like on your belt, uh, I know tacos are really popular. Uh, so if you, you know, if you're a diehard taco fan, jump down in the comments, tacos forever, taco Tuesday, whatever the, the you know, hashtag is this week. 
Um, I am a huge fan of, of high-speed gear. I personally don't like tacos. I just don't. But I do like a lot of their other gear. As you can see, I use, uh, I love their belts. Huge fan of their belts. Um, and I've used a lot of their other stuff um, over the years. And they, they make really good gear. Um, so despite the fact that I don't like tacos, I do really like high-speed gear. And like I said, I really want to try their sure grip inner belts that you can use with the operator belts because that's a neat concept and I like it. Um, so yeah, hope this was useful. Sorry, took off on a tangent there again. Um, if it was, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, questions, comments, please put them in the comment section. Um, if you would like to support us monetarily, uh, that would be awesome. We do have a Patreon page. We have a couple of Patreons. Um, which is kind of cool. Um, however, if you can't support us monetarily, I get that times are rough and unfortunately it's not getting a whole ton better right now. So um, likes and shares, you know, social media gold. So I really appreciate that you watched and uh, hope to see you again next time.